It's not unknown to most that there are differing opinions regarding forest management in the United States, particularly in regard to forest health and wildfire risk reduction. But in Oregon, they embrace and fight to work together by setting up collaboratives. These groups are what bring forest management to life in these towns. Managing a forest is a very challenging thing. It's very complicated with a lot of moving parts, a lot of competing parties uh, that have competing interests. And everybody sees it through the lens of their own interests. And so you end up with conflicts between recreation, environmentalists, uh, development, uh, logging industry, just to name a few. And so you want to manage the forest so you have a healthy forest. What does healthy mean? It's not just about one timber, wildlife, or whatever. You're going to be charged with how to uh, manage a lot of different things with competing interests and how you work with those people through collaboratives, which we see a lot of these days or other groups, is going to be really important to be able to move forward with, um, with management on particularly public lands. But in essence, what it is, is it's a, a, a group of stakeholders of all kinds that have been brought together that, that are all on a volunteer basis. And then there are some facilitators that are very helpful in helping to manage and, and facilitate and develop the collaborative itself. Through the work in the Deschutes Collaborative Forest Project and the people that have been involved in that for many, many years, that that understanding of how everything's interconnected, that forest man, you know, having a healthy forest allows you to have high quality outdoor recreation. Um, it contributes to the economy and they all kind of work together in sync. And so it's not so much about one value against each other, but how do they work in, in coordination and collaboration and, and trying to get to consensus. For all of those different interests, they have a different answer for that. So what we do in the collaborative is all of those groups are engaged, involved, and in the discussion. And it's helped to bridge some of the gap between the different stakeholders, bring people together so that they can have a discussion about something that has been a pretty controversial topic for the last several decades. And it's allowed, you know, with some success certainly, to bring people together so that you can kind of move the process forward and not just be mired down in argument and litigation. Spend a lot of time um, educating about forest restoration, a lot of times talking about prescribed fire and smoke and being really effective at, at linking out to um, people who care about it, whether it's people who use the mountain bike trails like you see here um, or otherwise and making some more of those connections that um, we normally wouldn't make as we talk about forest restoration. So I, I give a lot of credit to the, the past and present and future members of the Deschutes Collaborative Forest Project for that. And so the bottom line with forest management uh, is, you know, how much is enough or how much is the right amount? And, you know, my take on it is the forest, you have to manage it or it just keeps growing. And why is that a bad thing? Fire suppression, that's why it's a bad thing because you overload it with fuel this is a very simplistic view, but if you get too much fuel, then you have a fire hazard. We don't have the option of let fire, letting fires burn anymore. There's too many people in the forest. Towns right next, Bend right here is at a high forest fire danger at any time. Uh, if they don't suppress fire or put fire out, Bend could go. And there's been several fires over the you know years that could have taken the town out if had, the, had they not been suppressed. And we have quite a few examples now of some of the thinning projects that we've done that have been the place where they were able to stop fire because we had, you know, created a more fire resistant area of the forest. So, you know, that's kind of the big picture or, you know, it, you know, you could say it's a simplistic way of looking at it, but it's, it's kind of the idea. With the collaborative projects being a big part in Oregon's outreach for forest management and education, we get some insights from professionals about what it means to have a healthy and resilient forest. Healthy to unhealthy kind of depends on what the historic dynamics uh, disturbance patterns were. 
What we've seen over the last hundred plus years is that we've removed fire, periodic fire from forests, and they've gotten more dense. The timber harvesting has accentuated that a bit because we harvested big trees and then we didn't manage the other younger trees, so we have these dents. Over the long term and over large spatial scales, uh, preservation doesn't work. Conservation is a much better uh, approach to things. Uh, conservation in involves uh, regular uh, maintenance, um, or it, which in our case often now starts with restoration. So we talk about restoration and maintenance. Restoration is not to a particular composition or structure because in the age of climate change, that may not have meaning anymore. Anyway, the 1800 Gilcrest forest condition may not have any meaning in 2050. Uh, but restoration of the processes, restoration of uh, the disturbance ecology, you know, those kinds of things that build in ecological resistance and resilience into those forests. Restoration of those kinds of things is an important concept and maintenance of it going forward. And so they're now more prone to, to bark beetle and also because uh, they're dense is that they're more vulnerable to say a crown type fire or a more severe fire. Now, some of our forests did have severe fire, but when you see it like in particularly Ponderosa Pine where hundreds of thousands of acres can actually burn, that is, that is unnatural. And so, and, um, and changes the, changes the dyna dynamic of that forest from there on. You know, fires and insect outbreaks are, are, are much larger and more severe. And so, we're kind of in this track and how do you get off that track? It, it requires a long-term view of looking at how these forests develop over time and thinking about a restoration strategy that can help um, avert that or reduce the potential effects in the future. As time evolved, what everybody has realized, maybe not everybody likes it, but what they've realized is, hey, industry is a key part of our forests because if we don't have industry what are we going to do with this stuff let it all burn up because it's that's an oper that's a road you don't want to go down you you want a you want a better solution than that and maybe i don't like the the total 100% solution but I like 78 of it. But that's what forestry is all about. Forestry is about active land management to meet the needs of society using this amazing forest resource uh, that we have out there that provides so many things to Oregonians and, and Westerners in general. Our forests are uh, amazing. Yes, they, they, are, they are the timber uh, and the jobs and the economy and the mills and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they're also just carbon. Uh, if, if we if we get carbon markets, uh, it, it, it is just scenery. It's it's aesthetic value. It's spiritual value uh, to me. Uh, it's it's watersheds. 80 80 percent of our fresh water in the state of Oregon, you know, comes comes from forested you know, watersheds. Uh, so it's it's fundamental water quality. It's wildlife habitat for the really cute and charismatic stuff, or the stuff we hunt, or our, our fisheries uh, connections, uh, but also species that we haven't even thought about, the whole biodiversity thing. You know, the forest is all these amazing things at once. Uh, it's, it's those things together interacting with each, each other and meeting the needs of society. And it's also fuel. Uh, and that's what we have forgotten is that it is all those things, it's all those things at once, but it is also fuel, and it's fuel that is going to burn. So I tell groups when I go speak to them, think of your favorite area that you like to camp, or walk through, or hike, or look at as you drive down the road. Think of all, all of those areas, and I am here to tell you they're going to burn. You just, you just, need, to, you just need to realize that that you know because your assumption is it's going to always be there it's like a postcard it's going to set still and always be there that's the preservation model that is a failure uh, it is going to change it's going to change slightly starting next week it may change drastically starting next week so you have to think about the forest as something that's dynamic uh, and in that sense needs to be conserved In our next episode, we hear from the community voices that share why they love Oregon and why forest restoration needs to continue.